Now we are talking about arguably one of the most important molecules in living organisms. All of these molecules are important, but up to 50% of the cell's dry weight is just proteins. Right, so if we dry out a cell, about half of the weight of a cell would just be proteins. So proteins are carrying out all of the really important functions to keep a cell alive. So it's going to be a quick overview of what are some of those general types of proteins and what do they do. The most important type of these proteins, the type of protein that keeps all of our cells alive, that helps us break down and build up other molecules, change the shape of molecules, are enzymes. Enzymes are catalysts, meaning that they will speed up chemical reactions within a cell, but they themselves are not used up. So one enzyme can be used many, many, many times. Enzymes can either build up or break down or change the shape, add on, take off pieces of a molecule, and they can do this repeatedly. But kind of the kicker is they are very specific to the types of molecules that they will, that they will work with. So they only work with very specific what we call substrates because their function depends on the shape and the chemical properties of their active site. So the active site is where that substrate bonds to, it's where the actual chemical reaction happens. So that active site is very specific to a substrate. So if a molecule works on, like for example, DNA, it probably wouldn't be able to work on a carbohydrate or another protein, right? I just want to show this gift really quick because it just drives home this idea again that enzymes are very specific to their substrate. They can only work on a substrate that matches up with their active site, change the shape of the active site, it won't be able to work on that substrate, or it might try and work on a substrate but it doesn't fit in its active site, it won't work. Okay, so it's usually one type of enzyme, one category of enzyme to one category of substrate. There might be some flexibility but generally one enzyme from one type of substrate. Defensive proteins are proteins that most vertebrates have that help us to neutralize pathogens. Okay, so we know of defensive proteins as antibodies, right? So antibodies are proteins that have a very specific shape um, that will bond to proteins on the surface of either a virus or a bacteria, or maybe a fungi or something else that's trying to invade us and cause disease, right? So as long as they have a region on the surface of that antibody, that antibody will bond to the bacterium or the virus, the disease-causing agent, and neutralize it. Basically flags it from, flags it so that way it'll be cleaned up by the immune system. And also these antibodies prevent that virus or bacteria from getting inside of our cells to reproduce. But again, typically it's dependent upon the shape the shape of the antibody doesn't match up with that virus or bacteria proteins on the surface, it's not going to do anything. We won't bond to it, won't have any impact on it. Storage proteins are a way to transfer amino acids from one place to another, typically from one organism to another, so from parent to offspring. Um, so storage proteins, things like casein, albumin, and eggs, these are a source of amino acids for the offspring, right? So casein is a protein in milk. Um, and the intention is to give that protein, transfer that protein from the mother cow to the offspring, right? Plants also have storage proteins, so the proteins that are in like nuts, things like that. If you eat an almond, it has, almonds have a relatively high protein concentration. That's because those proteins are intended for their offspring to use as a source of amino acids as they start to grow. Transport proteins move things around. Either move things within an organism, like hemoglobin, is a protein that moves oxygen around, or they can move things across membranes, right? So transport proteins will be embedded in cell membranes to shuttle molecules across that membrane that cannot directly move across the membrane themselves. So transport proteins in membranes are usually shuttling large molecules, or help to move molecules against their concentration gradient. That doesn't make sense right now, that's okay, we'll cover that when we get to um, cell membranes and osmosis. Signaling proteins act like hormones. So they 
are proteins that are secreted, they're sent out through the circulatory system, and then they interact with other cells and influence what those other cells are doing. So they direct the functions of other cells based on internal bodily conditions, right? So insulin is secreted. Insulin is secreted by the pancreas when the blood sugar is too high, which then causes cells that it comes in contact with to take up sugar. So that way we can drop that blood sugar down back to a normal level, right? So hormonal proteins help to maintain homeostasis, help to keep that living organism within very specific ranges. In this case, a very specific range of acceptable blood sugar levels, the concentration of blood, concentration of sugar in the blood. Contractile motor proteins can cause movement, right? So most of our muscle tissue are proteins that move against each other to contract, which causes them to overall shorten, which causes us to move our skeleton, right? Um, Actin and myosin are some of the most famous of these. They move against each other to shorten and then they can extend back out when they're relaxed, right? That process though takes a lot of ATP. Um, here we have these striations, right, in this muscle tissue. Those are all proteins, actin and myosin, that are acting, that are working together to cause contraction. They're also responsible for um, things like cilia and flagella, which are projections of the cell surface and those projections can move in order to cause movement for the cell, right? Waggle the cilia around, the cell can move, right? Um, there, are, are, there are also motor proteins inside of cells moving things around. So that we have a cytoskeleton highway system basically inside of all of our cells in which proteins can move vesicles around, they can move other compounds around, right? So here we're looking at a motor protein called kinesin. It's moving along a cytoskeleton filament. This is another type of protein. And it's moving, this right here is called a vesicle. It's basically a membrane bubble that contains stuff. So this little kinesin protein needs to move this to somewhere else in the cell. And so it's gonna whack it around. So it's, I love this video. Look at that, it's so cute. This is actually being slowed down, um, and every single step it's taking, it's a shape change that's happening within that protein that's caused by breaking up an ATP molecule. Step. It's so cute. Sorry. I just love this. So it's moving this vesicle around this cytoskeleton protein. Structural proteins kind of keep everything together. They're the scaffolding within cells, there's a scaffolding between cells, right? Have you ever thought about how do all of our trillions of cells stick together? Why are we not just a puddle of goo? Why do we have this specific structure to how our cells are ordered? Proteins. Proteins hold all that stuff together. Um, so things like collagen, um, keratin, right? Those are all structural prote proteins that keep all of our cells together and provide protection for those cells as well.